All right. We are on filmsgonewild.com. My name is John Wildman. We are at the Big Bear Film Summit. And this is one of a couple short segments that we're going to do. And for the short segment, we have Tracy Lehman. She is the director of Ghosted. And we have Patrick Hogan. He is the director of Killing Time. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, All John. Right. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Now, let's start this off this way. Um, our audience, we're assuming our audience have, has not seen either film. So I'm going to have both of you uh, introduce our audiences describing the films. So Patrick, why don't you go first on Killing Time? Tell us about Killing Time. Sure. Hi, I'm Patrick Hogan. I was the writer director on Killing Time, which filmed up here uh, in Big Bear, uh, which you can see in all its glory behind me. Uh, it's a uh, sci-fi thriller horror. Uh, it's uh, about a woman who uh, is out on a run and she attracts the attention of a mysterious figure in black who follows her back to her uh, kind of remote home uh, where it's, the figure sneaks inside and lies in wait for her. And eventually she's going to have to confront decisions she's made in the past to uh, protect those that she loves uh, with some twists and unexpected turns along the way. There we go. All right, Tracy, <laughs> tell us about Ghosted. Um, Ghosted is a, is a story about a woman with a lot of baggage who falls in love with a man haunted by his past. Um, and that's literally, uh, she, she literally carries around a lot of baggage and he's literally followed by the ghost of his ex there. Um, and uh, may or may not be inspired by, by uh, my own relationships, but, um, <laughs> and it's told in, in a very um, fairy tale storybook kind of way, so. Right, here's what I, what, and why I wanted to pair the two of you with these two films, because you go, okay, what, what's the connection here? And the connection is they're both big idea films in very, in, you know, dealing with very different genres, very different topics, but they're still big ideas. And I often talk about the fact that as a filmmaker, I have no confidence that no one, that, that anyone will ever give me money to make another film ever again. And so therefore, if I do get that money somehow, then I want to make something that is a big idea. It's something that I'm mean, going, you know something, uh, you know, if I never get another shot to do it, at least I've done this crazy ass thing, right? And, and both of you, I think, did it with these films, um, but they're also short films. And so I'm gonna ask you both what I ask almost every short filmmaker I get to talk to. Why the hell are you making a short film? I mean, you're not gonna make money on this thing. What are you doing? So Tracy, Let's start off with you on that one. Why, um, why make a short film? <laughs> well, th this was the, you know, money is often our barrier, right, to, to access and, and things. And uh, and for, this is the first time I crowdfunded. I know you have a lot of experience crowdfunding and and I, 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 I'd I like to not make another short. And, and, you know, I'd like to go to the feed. I'm ready, you know, this. And a lot of people are like, Ghost, it should be a feature, you know, like make it a feature. Um, and I'm ready. I'm totally ready. I guess I wanted to make sure that I could uh, excel in a short version first, you know, and then say, okay, here we go. You know, they say calling cards and things like that. And, and I feel that we really did. And, and now I, I, you know, you get confidence from experience. And when you do these shorts and you, you come against obstacles and things and, and you handle them well, and people work well together and you hire the right people and, and all that, you're like, okay, all right, we can go into the, you know, the bigger obstacles and the, and the longer duration of, of the, you know, production time and all that. And we can, we can excel at that as well. So, so, but yeah, I'm ready to make some money, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Patrick, Patrick, you're up next. Uh, I make short films because I love the aesthetic of being poor. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it's funny because my, my, the next project I've decided uh, between two projects, the next one's going to be a feature. Uh, simply, simply because it would be nice to have an opportunity to, to, to make money on it. But um, the main reason on this particular short film, so I, um, I did a couple of short films a long time ago, and then I actually did a feature, um, which won uh, both prizes at the old Big Bear Film Festival back in the day, which was started my love affair with Big Bear. Um, but this particular film uh, was a pandemic film. So it was, it was myself and some actor friends 
I was like, we're all unemployed right now, sitting at home. Um, I had a short script I had written previously that touched on this topic. I had been reading, a, a, I don't want to spoil it, but I've been reading a science journal, which talked about something which inspired the big idea. And I wrote it and then it just was sitting aside. And then during the pandemic, as I realized this isn't going to end anytime soon, um, I thought, you know, I bet I could reconfigure this in a way that could meet what I was thinking were going to be the guidelines from SAG because my, my friends who are in the film are SAG actors. So I was like, I think I can retool this. So I, I rewrote it and I gave it to my wife who produces uh, uh, all my shorts, Anna. And uh, she read it and gave some notes and, and then I sent it to the actors in question and, and it just kind of went from there. And uh, it, was, it was filmed in a way that allowed us to meet the, the cheapest SAG rules to follow. Cause there, if you do certain things, you have to do things that cost a lot of money. Uh, to keep people safe. So we found that the cheap way to make the film and keep everybody safe. Uh, and that's why we made this particular short film. But uh, I'm going to trace it. The next one's going to be a feature. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm uh, man, you know, I'm a member of SAG and yet I'm not a fan. Um, it's such a pain in the ass. And it, you know, it, here's the thing, it's always interesting to me. Like I'll talk to producers and they'll go, oh, well you did that, that you don't have to actually have to do that stuff. Just do this instead and it'll be fine. And I'm going, I'm a boy scout. I'm doing everything by the rules. I don't have it in me to go, oh, I'll, t I'll, I'll, I'll work around to do this. So, you know, if they tell me I have to do something, then I'm gonna do it. And, and for anybody who works on the budget of the films that we're talking about, it's like near impossible. And again, it's like, it's my union, Jesus. You know, but, but, you know, but that's the thing. I, I also, the, the next question I have for both of you, and, and this is something that the experience that I had making a short after I made a feature. And, and I found that I was so much more efficient um, shooting the short than I was on the feature. And, 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 and it was such a learning lesson um, in how to be more economical, both in my approach, both, both you know, in, 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 in what I did with the writing for it, when the preparation, in the post of it, um, that I know is going to enhance when I do that next feature, because it, it, because it was the, I, I was like going, holy crap, I wish I would have done things this way on the feature. And the short allowed me that kind of like that lab um, mm -hmm. within in, in myself. And I wanted to, talk, to ask both of you, you know, if, um, you know, if, if you had kind of found that as well, that, that in the process of these, of, of these two shorts in particular, that, that you go, oh, you know something? Ah, this, yeah, this is a good one. I'm gonna take this onto the next project because the, this, this, it, this worked a lot better than stuff that I've done in the past. Um, Tracy, let's start with you on that one. Well, um, I, yes, definitely. And, and uh, one, one thing for sure that I, that I think um, shorts are just such a great framework, develop such a great framework for are the relationships with your crew, you know, and, and, that, you know, developing, having a short time where you can, it's like a practice, like, I want to work with you. Is it going to go well? Hey, it went well. Now we have a shorthand. You get my tone, you know, like, like we can work quickly and with, with a lot that kind of trust and shorthand, you can work very quickly. So, so taking that to the feature, of course, I want to work with some of the same department heads, you know, if they're available. And of course, I want to work with some of the same cast and having, carrying that into a feature, I think will really expedite um, you know, we, you're so limited on days on these ND features. And so just the ability to, to and, the, and just that trust, it's, it's so important, so. Right. Patrick, what about you? Yeah, I mean, that's, if I just say what she said, I mean, <laughs> 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 uh, I mean that's, that's part of it. Uh, uh, <laughs> if, if you can shoot nine pages in a day on a short film with a bare bones crew, then you know you can count on those same people when it's maybe a 30 person crew and fingers crossed, you're you're only shooting five pages a day, which still for a feature is breakneck pace, but is a luxury compared to what you were doing on your on your short film. So that's a part of it. Uh, the the short I did prior to this one uh, in 2019, the DP was the best boy on the feature I had done, and in the meantime, he had gone off and and started uh, shooting his own projects, and so it was kind of a case of I knew him from the the feature. And 
when we and then we hit it off on on the uh, short and he would have done my pandemic short except that he was uh working on an abc show and during the pandemic they uh, locked down their entire crew and didn't allow them literally to go anywhere like they were told go home on the weekends and stay home and don't leave your house <laughs> uh, which precluded him shooting this film but he's someone that i've been in the trenches with and i know if i do this feature uh, at the beginning of the next year um if he's available he's my choice because i know that he gets my vision and work well same you know so so basically i just said the same thing tracy said in different words <laughs> still, still her answer but you know that works it works okay we're gonna finish up with two questions i always ask um and the first is you know when we've done a long shoot, when, we, when we've, we've gone through a lot of the pain in the ass read that we go through to make films, sometimes we need to be reminded by why, we, why we're doing this in the first place. And there's a film, oftentimes there's a film that we go back to and we rewatch that film. Um, and you go, oh yeah, this is why. And sometimes it's just a happy moment film that we go, listen, I, 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 need, I need to recover. Um, you know, so I'm gonna put this DVD in again and, and, now, uh, you know, and now it's gonna take me back. So uh, Patrick, you get the first shot at this. What is that film for you? Okay, I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say two films simply because- oh, damn it, I, all right. I, if, but if I say these two films and then you watch my films, you're gonna go, oh, like, yeah. Like, okay, that's Patrick. So, because they're, they're two different things. So the film that affected me on a personal level that I can watch any day, any week, that is my, aesthetic as far as as ideas of human relationship and interconnectedness and and humanity and just the the tone of it's funny but it's but it's dramatic is a film most people haven't seen called breaking away uh from 1979 dennis christopher oh yeah uh, Den, uh dennis quaid um uh about a kid who wants to be a cyclist uh in a small town in indiana um and uh so breaking away is the film i i love that film love that film it's my favorite film of all time i love that film now the cheat is my first memory of going to a cinema and having that communal experience of being blown away was star wars i was that i was that opening weekend way back when i was a wee little one and i had never seen anything like it but looking around i realized all these people who were much older than me and by old people i mean people who were like 20 <laughs> at the time 20 was old to me those hadn't seen that either and that was the moment when i was really inspired by what cinema can do so if you can combine star wars and breaking away into one movie that's pretty pretty much what i do all right okay tracy you're up what's your film wow that's that's tough to beat but um i <laughs> um i think the first what i i have the poster and it, it means a lot to me um i think the first movie that i felt like oh wow this is the the kind of tone that i want and the voice that i feel like i have and is, was Little Miss Sunshine for me. And, and, um, the, and I, you know, my movies tend to have, they're, they're flawed characters that are struggling, you know, there's earned character humor and there are big themes and they're, they're big sophisticated themes, but they're kind of told in, in ways that don't feel like they're being, you know, shoved down your throat and, and, and with a lot of humanity and heart and humor, earned character humor. And so Little Miss Sunshine, you know, I, I, I personally think it's a perfect film. And you know some of those scenes, like with Abigail Breslin and 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 um, her grandfather. You know that's oh my god, I'll start crying. You know, but just there's so or or the scene where Paul Dano finds out you know he can't be a pilot and all, all those scenes. There's so these relationships and and I just really strive to to have those kind of relationships and characters in my film. So I I think. I watched those before. Afterwards, I'm usually sleeping, but, uh, but I, I definitely watched a little bit of sunshine before we had to do a movie. <laughs> oh, both, both really nice answers. Uh, again, we've been talking about uh, on our short segment, uh, the film Ghosted, which is directed by Tracy Lehman and Killing Time, which is directed by Patrick Hogan. So uh, thank you guys. This has, been, this has been a fun talk. Nice to have you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs>